mob movie fans ate well in the 90s. Between the likes of Goodfellas, Casino, Miller's Crossing, Reservoir Dogs, A Bronx Tale, Carlito's Way, Bugsy and more, there was crime movie aplenty in the genre's last great decade. Sitting in and amongst all these gangster films is 1996's Gotti, a biography of John Gotti, known as the Dapper Don or the Teflon Don, the last of the flamboyant mafia crime bosses who didn't shy away from media attention. Directed by Robert Harmon and produced by HBO, the film charts the rise of Gotti to becoming the head of the Gambino crime family, before being convicted of racketeering and murder in the 90s, which was just a few years before the film's release, and it does so in a tidy runtime of just under two hours. This is not a retro review, which I've done a few times on the channel, reviews of films I've already seen, because believe it or not, I've never seen Gotti before. Despite having seen so many Mafia films, Gotti always evaded me, and the only Gotti film I've seen is a certain other adaption of the man's life. <coughs> so I've got a bit of a bad taste in my mouth with Gotti's story, but even still, comparing the two films, it's quite remarkable just how much of a difference in quality two films can have that are both based on the same thing. No doubt the 1996's film's reputation, already considered something of an underrated sleeper gem in the genre, will get even better because now people will constantly compare it to the terrible Travolta version. Michael Francis, former Colombo crime family capo, once described Gotti as the most authentic gangster film ever made. Is he right? Well, he'll know way more about that than I would. And for sure, this is a word that comes to mind when one wants to describe Gotti. Authentic. There's just something about this film that feels real. It's a down-to-earth realness that we saw in Goodfellas, which stripped the supposed honourable world of gangsters from the facades of codes and integrity, but even Goodfellas was heavily stylized. With this film, for much of it, it just feels like it's telling a down-to-earth story, with the larger-than-life element coming from the larger-than-life titular character played by an actor giving a larger-than-life performance. That kind of low-key grittiness would again be seen in Donny Brasco just a year later, and then perfected in The Sopranos. In fact, we all know how Goodfellas inspired The Sopranos, but Gotti played just as much of an influence, convincing HBO that a show about the mob could work, and many of the actors in this film were cast in the show. There's tangible reasons for the feel of Gotti too, like tons of tiny little details that make a difference, like say, Neil making a quick signal and someone instantly turning the cassette or radio off. We've got our friend with the big snatch, a house, Mr Magoo and a guy who single-handedly took on an interior decorator. And cinema legend Anthony Quinn was in this film, giving a magnificent performance as Gotti's mentor, Neil Delacrosse, at over 80 years of age, a performance with gravitas, with presence, and yet a warmth which really makes you feel that he and Gotti had a father and son-like connection in spite of limited screen time. I always liked Quinn. I first became aware of him when he played the Libyan freedom fighter Omar Mukhtar in Lion of the Desert. He gave an ace performance in Across 110th Street and was great in La Strada and Lawrence of Arabia, and those are just a few of his big films. I could never quite work out where he was from. Was he British? Was he American? What? He was Mexican? But he played an Italian-America gangster so effortlessly. What an actor though. A career like his, the various nationalities and races he played, it couldn't exist today. And it was so cool having such a juggernaut in this little TV movie. And why was this a TV movie? Seriously, it's got a stacked cast. I didn't even mention the likes of William Forsyth and Richard Safarian. Honestly, with maybe 10-15 minutes added to flesh things out, I could easily see the film muscling its way through the crowd and becoming one of the more well-known feature-length gangster movies of the 90s. It's ironic that a film about the most well-known mobster since Al Capone is so obscure. From what I gather, it was supposed to originally be released in cinemas, but the film faced funding issues. And then there's Armand Asante. What a performance. I heard some great things about his role in the film, but I was blown away by how good the guy was. Those who have seen a lot of archive footage of the real Gotti say he nailed it. I can't quite comment on that, 
but he was electric. It was like he had a current up his ass the entire film, and sometimes it felt good and other times it made him mad. He's just so badass and commands presence. He did remind me of Stallone a few times, played Sly's brother in a couple of films, didn't he? There are lines he is given, dialogue he says that would have been cringeworthy if said by a lesser or miscast actor, as we've seen with the other Gossi movie with Travolta doing the whole use a capiche and ooh, but Asante sells it so well, an incredible performance, so captivating. He's done one of those performances that makes you want to act like him and talk like him in the mirror when no one's watching to embarrass you. Hey Angie, agavi, adiamo, you don't know the streets like me, a capiche, hey gabagoo over here. You shouldn't like this guy. He's big headed, he breaks the rules but gets upset when others do the same. But in typical mafia movie fashion you do like him and much of it is carried by the actor's charisma. I'm surprised that he wasn't in more mob movie stuff after this. He had a small role as a mobster in Ridley Scott's American Gangster but not much apart from that. Why not cast him in The Sopranos or something? He could have been Jackie Senior or someone. It would have made for good continuity because he looks like David Proval, who played Jackie's brother Richie. Everyone was great in the film, a lot of great actors, actors who look and feel the part. They don't need to do much, just the way they look and talk you instantly buy that they are mobbed up. Again, authenticity, a down to earth feel because the actors feel down to earth. But I remember when some of these actors used to wait in the car, and as far as I'm concerned they should still be there. The movie is well structured narrative wise. It isn't the easiest thing to do when making a biopic, but Gotti's highs in the film often take place all together, beating charges, getting a promotion, frustrating the feds, and the lows all come at the same time too, which makes for a film that doesn't feel as disjointed as it could have done if it decided it wanted to be a documentary. The script is informative and smart. The dialogue, for example, it just wasn't swearing and arguments between mobsters, everybody trying to act cool. You can see multiple sides of the arguments, and that makes the dilemmas the characters go through more interesting. You could even have this movie told from Sammy the Bull's point of view, a paranoid mob hitter who thinks his boss is out to get him and will sell him to the feds. You could have it from Neil's point of view, an old man, desperate not to leave behind a warring family. Or even Paul Castellano, a mobster wanting to take the mob into the legitimate world, being upsurged by this volatile, unstable hoodlum named Gotti, who is a side character. This is just the way they chose to tell the story, and this works because the characters and actors are strong. It even delves into existentialism. I really loved Neil's deathbed scene, he had a great monologue with good wisdom. Any scene with Quinn was golden really, another being where he lays it into Gotti about how close he came to getting killed. A lot of the movie's focus is on mob politics, so really it could work as a movie set in ancient Rome, a movie set in the world of big business, and it fuses this film about politics with the life of John Gotti. I would have loved for it to have some more room to breathe though, I wonder what they could have done with another 30 minutes. Some bits are hard to follow and dialogue moves very fast. I watched a DVD quality version but I see that there are remastered versions. I'd probably enjoy it even more and pick up on more stuff if I watched it in HD. I suppose I don't need to go through Gotti's story with you because if you've clicked on this video you probably are already familiar with it. And if Travolta's version is the only other main contender for a Gotti biopic, well let's just say I always thought there was room for a definitive biopic of John Gotti and yet here is one sitting right here. It did love the man a bit too much though. There were clearly attempts to make him seem like he was a really good man on a level, when much of what we know tells us he was extremely vicious and no matter how far the film wanted to lean in the other direction I couldn't help feel it inadvertently made a great case for Castellano wanting to whack Gotti and for Sammy Gravano to betray him. There were some comments Gotti made in prison to a black guy which kind of made it look like he was above racism, and yet there is a tape of the real man saying being the n word is an embarrassment and he's talking about a kid. And then there's the thing with his kid, Gotti's son was killed when his neighbour John Favara accidentally hit him with a car when the kid was playing in the road. Favara was kidnapped and disappeared, with it being widely suspected Gotti ordered his death and he later saying something along the lines of not minding if the man turned up dead. 
pretty convenient that he went on holiday three days before his neighbour disappeared. In the movie, however, Gotti tells his men not to do anything, that it was an accident, but they go ahead and kill the civilian anyway. That rubbed me up the wrong way. I felt it was in poor taste. I wonder how Ferrara's family, how his children, would react seeing John's death depicted with Gotti looking like he handled the situation with honour and didn't want him harmed. And I don't even want to think about the rumours that he personally killed Favara with a chainsaw, which of course isn't in the movie. And he doesn't need to be a good guy anyway, that kind of stuff wasn't necessary. This isn't a Disney movie, Asante's charisma carried it and was enough for us to stick with the protagonist. Plus, seeing him do things that are actively wrong makes him a more interesting character. However, on that point, I do have to say that the last shot of the film is very interesting and potentially changes things. In Gotti's closing monologue, he talks about how they're gonna wish there was still a John Gotti, things like that, but he's looking into a mirror with a warped reflection of himself, unlike the similar scene which opens the film. And perhaps the movie is actually doing something really clever here because that's what the film is, a warped reflection of a man who wasn't what he actually thought he was. The story is distorted, like the way he looks reflected in the mirror, because it's told from his point of view. I wonder if that was the intention behind the entire film, or if it was something thrown in at the end. But at the very least, the ending was definitely intentional. There's no way they would end the film like that without a reason. So what do you think of this Gotti movie? Do you think it deserves to be counted among the best mob pictures? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.